Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Rhoda Aglago, and I am your speaker today. I'm excited about this topic, even though it's not a happy topic. However, I believe we need to deal with it. We need to understand it and know how to deal with it. Anyways, welcome to Love, Forgive, Live podcast. And my goal is to empower, encourage, and of course, motivate my brothers and sisters, all of humanity. As it is something that I enjoy doing as a work, as well as uh, for pleasure. Now, today's topic is about loneliness. How it develops. And if it does, what do we do with it? How do we help ourselves to get out of that state of mind or that emotion? So then it doesn't linger on to create further damage to us. Loneliness is a very powerful emotion. Yes, I say emotion. What I'm going to talk about is the the emotion of loneliness. It's not about your physical state where you're with a group of people or, or lack of. But the emotion that loneliness is, because there are different types of emotion, but the one I'm speaking about is the emotional loneliness, which we create. We as human beings, we have the power and the potential to create. Remember, as you think it, so shall you be. Because when you think it, you start feeling it and you start becoming that. What you put your mind to, you create. That's very important. And so that's why loneliness being an emotional thing, we have the power and the control of how to stop it from going further and even from developing. When you notice it's developing, what you can do to keep yourself from going over the edge with it where it becomes something that you cannot control. Okay? So emotional loneliness is very, very difficult. And it's a state of mind that we create. We have the power to create that. And we have the power to not make that happen. I remember for me, when I became aware of emotional loneliness. Okay, so this is going into something really personal. And with full disclosure, please forgive me. I remember living alone. In Regina, Saskatchewan, because that's where I grew up and spent most of my late teens and into my 20s, I spent most of that time in Regina. It's R-E-G-I-N-A. Some people may say Regina, but in the city, it's called Regina. It's in Saskatchewan, Canada. So please don't come at me and be like, why is she calling it like that? That's the name it's called. It's a small town or a small city. Anyways, that's beside the point. Now, with loneliness, what I ended up creating, which shocked the bejeebas out of me, I started feeling sad about an event that happened that I was not happy about. So I started feeling sad. Instead of me changing that sadness into something that would help me, I ruminated on it. I ruminated so much on that sadness and then I started thinking about how so many times in my life I was so sad 
and didn't have what I needed or what I wanted. So then I prolonged that sadness and added more fuel to it by remembering all the times in my life when I didn't have. And I added all of that to it. So then I started thinking I wasn't enough. I wasn't worthy to be loved. I wasn't someone that deserved love. And it created this sense of feeling that I was alone and nobody has ever felt the way I felt. So then I started creating that loneliness, that emotional separation from all, from everyone, from source. So once I started creating that, I started feeling lost and angry and of course depressed started having anxiety and it created a something within me that I didn't even recognize how fast that developed and because it went on unchecked and I didn't even know it was happening that bad and I, I you know of course I sat in it and marinated yes seriously I marinated in that emotion and that debilitating emotion and kept it going and when that happened it made me become a person that I didn't even recognize I started self-isolating from people that I cared about to the extent that I couldn't even remember my support system to reach out to anyone and call on anyone and say hey I think I need help or I think something might be going on with me I might need some help or just saying hey this is going on with me. I don't know if there's anything to it. How can I solve it? What can I do? I didn't ask any of that. I just went on and on and on and then going on. And I recall a time I was so overwhelmed with my emotions and my fear that it started developing because I ruminated on it so much and that took off on its own and it created a life on its own. I recall going to school and I didn't have a car and Saskatchewan gets very very cold the province is extremely cold in the winter and so I had to take a bus I took a bus and I was going home and I didn't realize that I was ruminating and felt so lonely and so emotionally drained from all that I became overwhelmed and the anxiety was so debilitating that I forgot myself on the bus. I know this may sound crazy to a lot of people listening to it and saying, what do you mean you forgot yourself on the bus? I was on the bus going home. The bus drove past my house. For some reason, it's like I wasn't even there. I was not aware of my surroundings or anything. I just marinated in this, this emotional gunk. And it, the bus went and dropped me off someplace completely farther away from my home. Actually, the last stop on the road, on 25th Avenue, I remember. It dropped me at the last place, and there was a field from where I believe I dropped. The, I, I saw the bus stop. The bus was gone, and I remember coming to. That's the only way I could put it, because I don't recall anything else that happened from that time. I came to and I realized that where I was, I saw the bus stop or where the bus is supposed to be. The bus stop was right there, but then there was, the bus wasn't there. And then I saw a field. And this field would probably be about maybe half a football field to the highway. And I could see the cars in the highway. I could hear them. And I I was like, what is going on? How on earth did I get here? Who brought me here? And what am I doing here? I completely forgot how I got there. And it frightened me. And I do recall crying and being overwhelmed. Remember at that time, I didn't have a cell phone because this was in the 90s. I didn't have a cell phone. And I panicked. I, I was just incredibly frightened. Then I was like, oh my goodness. So if I hadn't woken up or come to, 
reality or whatever you may call it, would I have walked into the highway and be hit by a car and not really realize it? What would I have been doing? And that was extremely frightening to me. Then with that shock, I proceeded to walk back home and I was cold. My hands were freezing. I felt like my feet felt like the nails in my feet were digging through my toes. Like it was incredibly cold. So with the realization of how I marinated in my own loneliness, emotions, and created so much more of the situation where I couldn't even, I didn't even know how to stop myself anymore. It just took a life of its own. And I walked home and I got to the door. I opened the door and got in and got to my apartment and opened the door. And I just literally, as soon as I shut the door behind me, I just slid to the floor and just sat there with my back against the door. And I just wept. I cried and cried and cried. And I cried so much. I was so exhausted. I fell asleep. And then when I woke up, I asked myself this question. What happened? How did I get there? How did things get this bad? And what was going on with me to drive me to this state? I guess you might call that lucky or something we say blessed, whatever you may call it. I was shocked that I was able to get home safely from the state I was in. So that's when I started recognizing the impact of how serious loneliness can get you in trouble. And if it's not checked, you know, needless to say, over time, I went and got the help I needed at the student's uh, women's center, which I later on volunteered for a couple of years after going there and getting the counseling I needed at the time. This was when I was doing my undergrad and understand what I was going through. Then I realized, oh my goodness, is the bad thing that happened that scared me and made me sad and I, I ruminated on it and marinated on it and then started adding more to it and it created that state for me. So loneliness can really be dangerous and it really can harm you, if not kill you. Because research shows loneliness, especially emotional loneliness, can create the most debilitating health risks for people. And it's important that we become aware of it, check it, get help if you need to, talk to people that you might need to talk to that might help you process what it is that you're feeling, what it is that you're going through, and put a name to it because it's, it's very important. Once you name it, it's so much more easier to deal with it. If you're not able to name it, then it's difficult. You may not be able to find out how to handle it or what to do with it. So it's very important to reach out to people that you care about, that care about you, and you know that it's safe to discuss your situation with them, how you're feeling, what you're processing, and how that is impacting your life. It's actually the most important thing you would do for yourself to save yourself. Because nobody's going to come and save you unless you stand up for yourself and advocate for yourself and save yourself. Because that's how you become the person that will keep you healthy. Okay? A word from our sponsors. We'll be back 